Yes. Yeah. All right. So the Sunday, relaxed day with a good food, feel relieved, relaxed, happy, getting ready for Monday. <clears throat> okay, let's see who are available for the cam. Anyone want to show your face? Give a smile. Okay, I have a few of them. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for the people staying on the camp. Some of them are not on the camp. That's fine. Okay, now, um, this is for the PMP exam preparation. I have some of them watching from YouTube as well. Thanks a lot for the people watching there. Uh, now, question to people here. Um, this program we are organizing in a way to go with uh, exam focus. In a sense, how to prepare for the examination, how a question look like, that's what we're looking into. On top of that, we are adding some content for you to revise the subject. Will that be useful for you? Yes, definitely. <laughs> right. It's uh, going to be a revising of a content, what you learn as part of the classes. So I should have people from uh, the batches uh, recently, August batch, some of them from June, some of them from April. Uh, do I have a mixed batch here? Anyone from August batch here? joined over the first day of the class? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We have some other from August as well. Okay, good. Thanks a lot for being here. So the people who newly joined here and people who continue for a long time, an information to you, uh, this uh, Sunday program is a place to ask questions. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, the question paper which you took or any subject you don't understand, we can discuss it. What happens usually is people bring up a couple of questions and they share the question and we converse about uh, how to solve this question. Because uh, many times the question looks so nice for us and we thought answer could be B. And after some time when you analyze, you found it's not B, it's going to be D as for the explanation. But still your brain can't accept it. And you feel that why or where I went wrong. Now, what happens is in the forum like this, when we converse, we get a different viewpoint. Then you may accept or you may debate. It's up to us. But the point is you start seeing the different views. This could happen in our regular classes. But since some of us have completed your sessions and now you are in the weekend program to listen to this kind of Q&A session. <laughs> so that's a highlight of the program. And this is going to happen one hour of time. So what we thought from this week is we will introduce a subject. So we will convert some information about uh, stakeholder management. And then we'll go to the question paper. I'll bring a couple of questions to discuss. And then we'll listen to your questions also. That's the order we are going to do this. And we keep evaluating and we keep improving the way the program is going. So it's ideally should be beneficial for the people here. So once again, thanks a lot for the people joined here. And uh, I assume my audio and video is good for everyone. If so, uh, what I can do is I can bring up some content. So what I'm going to do now is first I will start with the stakeholder management. I want to give a little highlight on this and then I get to the uh, exam discussion. Uh, people who have questions, usually they put their hands up. So we know that uh, you have something to discuss. So we know we will call out your name and then we'll converse from there. All right. Um, but uh, before jumping there, I have one habit to check with people who have exam in the next few days uh, because they'll be in a little uh, uh, sometime tense mode, happy mode. We want to listen to them. Anyone here close to the exam in the next few days? I see. I have exam oh. on Tuesday. Shweta, you have exam? Yeah. Um, what is the date of exam? 22nd. 22nd. Okay. Tuesday. Yeah. Um, I believe we are in communication WhatsApp already. Yes, yes, I'm constantly discussing you. <laughs> Very good, nice. And uh, you feel confident, feel excited for the exam? Yes, yeah, Shri, I am from April, but I took very long time to steadily go through all the content and finally okay. I'm feeling like, okay, I'm <laughs> reaching the okay. final exam. Yeah. Exam. Ready for the yeah. exam. Yeah. And uh, more than you are excited, I think your family would be excited. Because uh, <laughs> exam is getting over, she'll be free. <laughs> I have been postponing quite a lot of things to, you know, 
PMP mm-hmm. exam, PMP exam. Now I have like all my entire next three, four weekends are lined up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The priority starts with the exam. Once the exam gets over, other priority starts comes out. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Um, as I have mentioned, we will get on phone call before yes. your exam. Okay. Yeah. All right. Keep up the momentum. Thank you. All right. Good wishes, Shweta. And I have a Saurabh. Hey, Saurabh. Yeah, I think yeah. I too have my exam on 20 second. Uh, okay. Which city you are taking your exam? I am taking in Gurgaon. Okay, good. Have you visited the center already? Uh, no, I mean I mean, I've checked the location, uh, so I know I know that place. Yeah. You are comfortable on that. Yeah. Did you check your ID cards? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. So your uh, momentum is set. Are you all set for the exam? Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just a difficult question. <laughs> All uh, right. Uh, uh, it's from school days, right? The moment you yeah. hear the word exam, <laughs> something happens. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, are we in touch in WhatsApp regularly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, we will have a call. Okay, yeah. we have to communicate each other. Okay. okay, good. Keep up that momentum. Saurabh is good. Shweta is good. Uh, anyone else in exam mode for the next uh, 10 days of time? Hi, Shri Varun here. Uh, hey, I have, I'm on 28th, so still a week for me. Week for you. Are you taking off from your work many times? Yeah, I'm not working at the moment, so yeah, I have a lot of time. You have time to okay spend. Okay, how many full exams have you done? I've done two and I will be taking two more. Two more are hitting. Okay, and are you analyzing the questions after the exam? I have analyzed, but it takes too much time is what I think. So any tips on how, what is the best way to uh, analyze it quickly? Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, analyzing, yes. Analyzing is a main part of your whole exam preparation because your whole learning will happen only when you analyze. True. So, uh, of course, the reading, you would have spent three, four weeks of time. Exam taking is good, but beyond exam taking, analyzing, you have to spend time. Don't compromise on that. Sorry. I would not tell days and days you have to analyze, uh, but I have a decent time. <laughs> right. The reason is when you're analyzing, you start seeing the gap in your subject understanding. Um, while analyzing, sometimes you understand you may not know certain keywords. The same keyword you would have been missed three or four times. Right. Right. So you will write down on a paper, this is a word I have to remember, or you will go to glossary or you go to index to, to, to see some keywords, right? right? And you read those words, the glossary. These all can happen only through analysis. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's worth spending time. I know it's painful, tedious. It's only for one week. After that, you are free. Perfect. So think yeah. like that. Put that effort for one week and make it happen. Sure. Thank you. We'll because the last one week is very crucial. Yeah. Uh, no distraction. Stay away from mobile, newspapers, and unwanted stuff. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Only food, sleep, and reading. That's it. Yeah. That's the plan. <laughs> okay. Good wishes. And uh, keep me posted on WhatsApp how things are going on with the third and fourth exam. Will do. Yeah. Thanks, you. Perfect. Good. Good around. Abdul Rahman, when is your exam? Uh, I haven't booked three. I just uh, texted you today. Uh, today yeah. is my yeah. first mock. The complete yes. 180 and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's quite tough to sit for the you know, three hours Four and hours. then yeah. Actually, the surprise part is three. Uh, most of the answers uh, are uh, option A in the mock exam. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, without knowing yeah. that, okay, I of yeah. course selected the other options. Uh, it came out actually, of course, uh, the result is not a guess actually. Uh, okay. 70, I scored 70 in the first mock. Mm. Uh, uh, so like I'm planning to give up uh, the exam uh, sometime second week of September uh, okay. so that in the meantime I can do some revisions and uh, give at least two more actually got you got you uh, I will, uh, I, mm-hmm. I will mm. keep, keep you posted on the couple of Perfect. Good, good progress move on if I remember your chat uh, you, you completed the exam 20 minutes earlier yes 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 Hmm. I haven't taken uh, the, uh, what is that? Uh, the break. Break. break yeah. Okay. Recommendation to you and everyone listening to this audio and video. Uh, please take break after 60 questions. 
we may think we are strong, stable, but without your knowledge, your brain ability goes down. This is very common in somebody driving in the highway. When you drive in the highway, after two hours, they take a break for a coffee or a tea. Uh, but while you're driving two hours, somebody asks how you feel. I'm comfortable. I'm having a very fancy car. It goes really well. I don't feel tired. But you may not know that your brain starts sleeping mode. Your brain starts going into cruise mode. They call cruise mode, which means you just hold it. But when something passes in between, your brain takes higher time to reflex. It, it takes more than a couple of more fraction seconds to get back to get on the hold. This is, this is the highway, what I observed. Okay, Same applies in exam. After 60 questions, what will happen is, or after one and a half hours, your brain, what happens is, it gets in the cruise mode. You start clicking. You may miss five to eight questions or 10 questions because of your brain not being alert. I didn't get this opportunity when I'm doing exam. Those days, four of us continuously have to sit. No break allowed. But you people are gifted now. They're giving two breaks officially. So please materialize it. Uh, I'm just passing to Abdul, to everyone here. After one and a half hours, please take a break. Go out, drink water, do something, walk and come back. So your brain gets a little more alert. Next 15 questions, your brain thinks better. So this is an observation. So Abdul, for next exam, please use that data uh, process. Yeah, Sri, is that like one and a half hours or the 60, 60 questions? 60 questions. Usually 60 questions will take 80, 90 minutes. So time management is given by PMI. They don't want to disturb us. They give you four hours. They leave it to you. It is up to us how to organize the time. So my observation in the last couple of years is usually the first 60 question people take between 80 or 90 minutes. 90 minutes goes by one and a half hours. Okay. And the second 60 question, they take 70 or 80. Third, also 70 or 80. So the first 60, usually the time is higher. I have seen even some people take 110 minutes. The reason is the anxiety and the pressure will be a little high in the first 20 questions. You read the same question a few times. When you're doing exam at your home, you don't do that. When you go to exam center, because you paid $500, uh, and so you get a little nervous there. That happens. Uh, so answer your question. Every 60, you take a break. Uh, Sri, uh, coming to the point, this point, like I have a problem, you know, reading the question, you know, a couple of times actually. Though I consciously read, then uh, uh, read the options. If I'm not, uh, you know, confident, then again, I will go back and uh, read the yep. questions. Yep, yep. Um, it's not only you. Can I ask people here? Do anyone have the same thing? Like you read the questions two times, three times. You have that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's not a one person problem. It's a problem for everyone. So it is because of our reading habits. Maybe okay. over a period of time, we lost the habit of reading books, writing paper. Uh, we don't involve in text too much. We are more on short reading habit. That could be one issue. Other one is the vocabulary of a PMI is not registered in our brain properly. It, it needs some more time. The words, if you don't understand, you read it again. right? Uh, first thing what I observed is writing habit and reading habit has gone down after our school and college. So even though you read emails in office, even though you do work at office, but you are not constantly sit and reading a book properly. Well, the people have a good book reading habit for them, one time reading, the brain captures it. For people who would not do it for a long time, it takes. That's why we are reading for the last four or five weeks to get the subject knowledge. So this is a very common thing, more than 80 or 90, uh, at least uh, uh, at least in country like India, more than 98% of the people don't read books. <laughs> they don't read books. Our parents, grandparents used to read. They read either Bible, Quran, Bhagavad Gita, something they read. We totally lost. So... If you want to get it back, it takes time. But let's not argue and debate on that right now. For now, what you can do is, it's okay to read fast. Still, if you can complete it in four hours, sufficient enough. How to improve this is reading vocabulary. What do you mean by vocabulary? Go to the glossary of a PMBOK or um, Agile Practice Guide or Rita. Pick up those keywords. Read the keywords meaning. The more you know the keywords, when you read a question, one time your brain can capture. Clear, clear on this topic? Yes, sir. Fantastic.
nice guys I keep moving uh i think that's much on the exam part now now what i do is we'll go to the subject so people have the question we'll discuss on the question in a few minutes of time uh just give me a second i'm just uh okay i'm going to share some content by the way stakeholder management <clears throat> i have some people who are from previous batches some of them from new batches people from previous batches have you heard this word a stakeholder register when you read the book yes sir. okay um so what is this a stakeholder register used for basically used to identify the stakeholders okay and, um, we list all the information uh, record the record the stakeholders information in the register and uh, okay it, we use some uh, sort of uh, analysis uh, like you know whether upward downward sideward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay Sounds to good. prioritize the stakeholders yeah all right fantastic thanks abdul for that so apart from Abdul, anyone else also aware of what is called stakeholder in this group? Hello. Yes, Nilanjan. Yeah, stakeholder management, uh, actually, it uh, speaks about identifying, uh, firstly, identifying the stakeholders. Okay. Then uh, uh, ranking them as per uh, um, the involvement uh, in the project and okay. uh, get to and checking uh, whether they are at the desired level or not. So uh -huh. it, it talks about managing stakeholder in totality, whether we have to, uh, like what kind of information that we need to uh, submit to them, what kind of involvement uh, we need to have. Okay. So all this. Got you. Got you. Thanks a lot for that, Naranjan. So the point here is stakeholder or human being or people who are directly or indirectly involved in a project. It could be any size of the project, bigger project or smaller project. It could be a one day project. It doesn't matter about the size of the project, but it all talks about who these people are. Uh, rightly heard from Abdullah and Niranjan that these are the people who are going to be part of the project and we have to list it down. Now, the big question comes up here is why we should list it down? Why can't they just come in and start doing the job? For which I can say that listing down is going to help us to know who these people are, okay? Then what's the benefit of knowing who these people are? When I know who these people are, I can also understand a little more better what is their involvement in the project. Now you can question me, why should I know the involvement of this person? Now let me put the question back to you. Why should I, as a project manager, or you as a project manager, should know involvement of X person or ex corporate in the project why should somebody else know this krishna yeah because during the project development if you come across any issues uh, maybe we need to know that with whom we need to contact who is the responsible person mm -hmm. for that particular mm -hmm. issue whether okay. it's project manager whether he can able to solve that if that particular issue is not solved by okay. that project person maybe the next level of the person who is responsible for that okay you, the responsibility are you talking about a responsibility assignment matrix like raci yeah Roughly. okay i i partially go with that but the completely will not go that that's not the only stakeholder area isn't it okay she, is it, she this is neha and mm -hmm. we need to prepare the list of a stakeholder because uh, these people will have the impact of the project, right? Executing uh, the project, they will have impact in some or the other way. And we need to have uh, alignment or I would say acceptance from them because they will have the impact. So we should be knowing what is the power and interest and how to keep them satisfied uh, because they have an impact and the level of impact goes Very up good. or down Very based good. on their interest. Thanks, Neha. If I heard from two people now, one I heard is I should know whom I have to get in touch for some reasons. Other one as I heard is to know the impact of it. I saw a couple of hands also up there. Anyone else want to talk about stakeholder? Why we have it? Uh, Vinay. Yes, Vinay. Please go ahead. Hi. So stakeholders are uh, 
identifying stakeholders are important because they have the ability to influence your project either okay. positively or negatively they mm. have there you go there you go i like the point positively or negatively they could impact very good nice to say thanks a lot now what i can show you is i would put something like this i will say a big bubble yes abdul uh sorry to interrupt actually in one of the question i saw the stakeholder in which process of the stakeholder uh, influences more so I'll, the, op the option ahead. was initiation I'll abdul i will go with this subject then we'll come sure, with the question sure, sure, okay sure. yeah thanks abdul um so what we'll do is uh, let's say stakeholder i will put a bubble like this i would say stakeholders is a bigger bubble it could have anyone who are directly or indirectly involved uh, some could be inside your organization some could be outside your organization some could be from the government segment could be anyone stakeholder could be anyone in this inner bubble i would say it could be your team members right this you would have seen before as well when i was discussing the class now point you want to recall here is stakeholder register is prepared from day 1 of a project and it can continue till the last day of the project of course in the beginning as much if you can gather the information it's useful the more you delay what happens is you may lose or miss some people now the question is why should i first of all collect this information if i collect this information is this going to help me in my project of course it will help in your project because these are the people who could be talking about the scope of your project these are the people who could bring some risk mitigation or a new risk themselves these are the people who is going to put you pressure or ask on schedule these are the people who is going to talk about budgeting parameters so when i know who i'm going to work with and is their involvement in the project chances are high chances are i will introduce a something very important which is called as what is this communication management the whole purpose of doing stakeholder understanding is to have a clear understanding of whom to talk what to talk when to talk or what to be shared with them because when they analyze a study of a project failures majority of the project fail because of lack of communication with the right stakeholder at the right time do anyone agree with this point if we don't talk with stakeholder at the right time that can derail the project is this true is this true including your pmp plans some of us keep our pmp plans very secret secret as if you don't even talk to your family members secret as if you don't even talk to your senior managers in the corporate because of various reasons and this could impact your exam date also you cannot plan the date because you didn't communicate to anyone you kept it secret so you keep on postponing because you can't take a leave over communication is also trouble if you have communicated too much at your place friends and family they keep poking you when you're writing the exam i'm just putting a point of your pmp exam or any exam now stakeholder management there is should not overdo or should not be super hidden so you should have some relevant connection with that but how do you do that let's see some more parameters abdul i'll come to your question sometime <clears throat> now if you see here some parameters we learn we have seen this in the class it's as i said this class is a revision to see some subject some parameters to observe about stakeholder is the power of a particular person or organization be very careful when i say stakeholder or when pmi says a stakeholder it is not always individual it is not always a human being individual it can be an organization it can be an ngo it can be a government authority it could be people who are directly or indirectly influencing or influenced by the project either positively or negatively there are people who are directly indirectly influenced or impacted by the project either positively or negatively that's called stakeholders so when i say stakeholder it could be huge list of people or organizations now we have to know their power why should i know their power 
i have to know their authority in project decisions i should know the interest of individual or organization why i should know their real concerns are they involved in the project why you should know this history i have a stakeholder register the register has 155 people starting from 1 to 150 people why don't i spend my time with all this 150 people now for this there is a question your time is limited in a project you have a limited time if you can spend time with all 150 people happy really happy but still if you want to prioritize the word prioritization comes in if i want to prioritize who i have to spend time for example today is sunday sunday i have many people from india sitting here some are from arab some are from us you had a priority to come to this class so you get some knowledge out of thousands of people attend the classes we have some number of people joined here some didn't prefer to join because in their priority it doesn't stand it's up to your life decision what is the priority which will help me to grow better in life or i can sit and watch a television it's up to you that's individual but when you go to a corporate it's a group of people a decision and shareholders involved and project can lead a company growth many parameters involved in that case i had to be very careful and watchful to say what is the power what is the interest these parameters will really help me to filter the priority list but that's not the concluded point because it's not only power interest i can even go influence of somebody who can influence on the decision of the project these english words are looks very similar for us because power interest influence these are very similar english words if you are it's a native language each word will have different meaning uh, the problem with some of us who prepare for the exam is our native language is not english obviously now what will happen is all these words look simple they are similar you will say hey power interest all same right not all same each has its own meaning so if a person really learning management if a person preparing for exam takes some time to understand words understand vocabulary more than very eager on how much i score rather more eager on how much of vocabulary i understood if i if you do that that is going to be called as a mindset preparation now coming here point so you have a power interest influence parameters okay what to do with this now you have to take the list of people whom you have as a stakeholder and start seeing who has authority who have concern who have influence when i know these people i start putting them in an order but see this list is nice but how do i put it in order powerful people interest people a powerful person can be interested a powerful person can be influential a influential person may not have a power but how do i do this in order to do that what somebody has done us in 1980s and 1970s they brought us some concept called power interest grid couple of guys brought this up then pmi adopted it what you see in the screen here is a graph or a chart which helps us to group it uh, there is a power interest there is a power influence now what you do you put a scale in a scale what you do here is you say this is low maybe it's zero when you say high maybe it's 100 you give a number for it and you have a stakeholder register with you your register is like this you have register starting with one 150 people now if i see in this 150 people number of people if i see one person who is very high in power position maybe a ceo high power in position and a high power high interest in making things happen what i will do is i will mark this person here let's say there is a person in 135 his name is a john okay now john is a person on some role i will instead of putting john here i'll put 135 could be here and then i'll put 173 something more or i'll say 73 or i will say 100 what is happening here is i want to mark who i have to spend time now you can question me why should i do this it's my day to day job that i have to talk to people yes you got to talk to people but what if these people want to reach you and you see an email you see a phone call they visit your office will i spend time with them with full attention 
Answer is yes. Because I know they are the key stakeholder for this project at this point of time. Underline it at this point of time. At this point of time, they're very important. Why are you using at this point of time is the same person one day can come here, which is low in power, low in interest. Could be possible. An architect who was designing the whole project, very high power, high interest, maybe very beginning stage of the project. As the project progressed and matured at some level, it could come to the level where you don't need to spend too much time with this person, rather notify how things are working. So the grid helps us to group people. Why we have to group people? To prioritize the number of people whom we have to establish communication, listen to them or attend to their queries. For that reason, they brought this. By the way, it's not the only thing. We have something called cube also, stakeholder cube, where you introduce power, interest, one more character called as attitude. Attitude is nothing but influencing parameters. One more is there. There is something called salience model. I do not put everything on the same day. But what I want to put on your brain right now is any project, irrespective of its size, irrespective of its model, whether it is predictive, adaptive, agile, non-agile, we definitely need the stakeholder understanding. If at all, one thing you have to start with in the beginning of the project is first ask who all will be the stakeholders directly, indirectly involved. This is a more responsibility of the project manager in some places. Team also involves and you collect the set of people and you start prioritizing who has to involve and there's a priority keep shuffling. The reason is over a period of time, the project situation changes, phases changes. So we have to reprioritize. Now that helps us to establish a communication plan. And that makes a smooth flow between all the stakeholders in the project. I believe it gives some recap of the topic what you have seen before. Let's see if somebody has a question. Somebody has a question. I can see hands up there. Uh, you have an emoji where you can put the hands up. So I know I have a question. Tushar, go ahead. Yes, Sri. Uh, see, what happens in, uh, in practical, in corporate, especially like our organizations, mm -hmm. where uh, we have a power and interest kind of a situation, uh, mm -hmm. do we also make a point to the, to the stakeholder what is in for them out of this project? Mm -hmm. So we normally do that. We get to them and say that, look, this is a project and this is, there's something in him or uh, the agency, uh, what they would achieve if they support mm -hmm. this project. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the right way? Yeah, or, good, good. Uh, yeah, that's what. See, the understanding of stakeholder involvement, how does it happen? You do some business discussions, you do workshops, you have a brainstorming session, through that only you come to know somebody has a power, somebody has an interest. So what you're doing is the process of helping, process of understanding what this stakeholder is all about. So what you're doing is right. However, you will be consciously doing it on a regular basis. It is not one time you will do and then you will forget it. You keep doing regularly. If your project is going to happen for 12 or 14 months, all these 14 months, you will keep a watch of who is what, when they are needed. It is not an individual decision all the time. It is a mutual decision. We also converse with the stakeholder. Hey, guys, we found you are a very important person in this project. What kind of influence are you expecting here? What kind of things you are expecting? We will converse it. It is not a secret document, but still it is a classified document. Do not expose with everyone. However, it is as you did. Yes, we do this regularly. That's what happens in project management. You're right. All right. Um, apart from this, have anyone seen something called a salience model? Have you heard about it? Have you heard about salience model? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. It has the power, urgency, and the legitimacy. And we will see in the mm -hmm. how many stakeholders are falling with this combination. Okay. Okay. And we will Sounds a good point. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Shweta, for that. Do you think salience model needed for all the projects, Shweta? What is your thought there?
any idea it's good to have this because uh, this model gives us the combination right when we look at this urgency and the power and okay. we have determined that uh, you know how they will influence the project and how we need to treat them it gives that idea got you got you thanks for that info shweta uh there is no limitation that where what to use you can use anything anywhere uh for example if i showed you a model called a uh, power interest grid this can be used in any model of project uh here we talk about what kind of people high power high interest yes that's what we understood right now now in salins model still the same format and also there are some recommendation in the project stakeholder list is pretty huge and the number of people is very high prioritization gets a little more tough when you have toughness in our uh, criticality of deciding who is important who is unimportant we introduce one more parameter apart from power interest the power interest parameter goes into power urgency and legitimacy now it goes like a venn diagram where you start putting whom to give importance for which when you say power uh, they are the influences or the authority of the state authority who can take some decision but usually you will have very few people in this place where you can give attention then what is the legitimacy power at least you understood the word many people may not exactly know the word legitimacy legitimacy is how genuine somebody on the work uh, how much genuinely they are involved right so uh, uh, you don't want to spend time with a person who is not genuinely involved isn't it that's what you do in your personal and office life right somebody is not genuine interest on what they are doing why should you spend time but how do i know this man they are genuine or not through conversations discussions brainstorming you know right by after some time you start getting a feel of what these guys are all about if they are not genuine maybe try to understand why they are not genuine why it's a problem there but you have to understand the involvement of them so if i know a person is powerful if i know a person is a very genuine and legitimate also i know what kind of urgency they have are they a time sensitive urgency or a criticality urgency what kind of urgency now when these three parameters come together somebody is powerful somebody is genuine somebody has some criticality how do you spend time for which there are numbers given here you can see somebody is a dormant when i say dormant this person is here powerful i gave an example of a ceo of a company a ceo of a company is so super powerful what do you mean by powerful can unplug the project anytime can unplug the investment anytime can change the decision of the course anytime powerful dormant which means they are powerful but they may be not urgent they may be not legitimate totally not involved ceo knows there is a project but not much information on that now you see some category here like a ceo has importance but not legitimate not urgent probably i will be passing the information i may not spend too much of time with this person or when i know powerful to unplug the project i may spend more time with that person this is just to categorize it if the same person comes with urgency what to do if a same person comes with a legitimacy what to do or falls in the category of center which becomes the definitive we have to spend time with them more on the task now there is a place that is come legitimacy i put a example of ngo i believe you all know what is an ngo right a ngo could be very genuine on helping somebody in the society and they come with a task on the project what you are doing you you spend time with them but say my projects don't have ngo i'm just giving an example there could be a project which has an ngo there could be a project which has a public coming in in many places when they go for a highway construction public comes and do a procession on the road side is a very urgency you have to attend it as early as possible if you don't attend it chances are you may get into some other trouble this is a very generic thing given as a salience model to group again prioritize the people by prioritizing what we mean is where we have to put our efforts of course everyone is important but you have to know where to spend time if not you may lose the key people or you may spread too much of time with unwanted person and you lose your time so for that understanding we use these parameters 
if you go to some other websites you can read something about salience model in pmp books you will not see much content because they are not much interested to explain all the concepts which is also not needed for an exam but you should know salience model is used one of the way for stakeholder analysis we call as stakeholder analysis you analyze and you put a prioritization if you can understand power legitimacy urgency in an excel sheet in your office you can create something like this and start grouping people start prioritizing people spend time with the right people at the right time that saves your project to move in the right direction that's the intention of having these parameters all right i think uh, that gave a little catch up on the information hope it was useful for some of you fantastic uh what do we do now let's get to the, some questions shweta you have something for me yeah hi shweta my question mm -hmm. is not on the second management topic but i have a question that is mm -hmm. uh, there are two some progress development and then the other one is rolling wave planning till now i am having an understanding both are one and the same but in one of the questions i couldn't hear you the first time what you said can you come close to the mic yeah yeah uh, i am confused on two terms one is progressive elaboration other one is uh, rolling wave planning i had an understanding both are of same hmm. and hmm. Uh, in one of while doing the analysis on some of the questions i got to know that uh, both options were given and mm -hmm. i got to know they are different so i just wanted to understand what is the difference between okay is this part of a stakeholder management no it is not okay so what do you understood about progressive elaboration it is as the, we progress in the project ahead we will get to or we will uncover certain unknown information or there might be changes in the requirement that would be needed that that's how we move towards the child and that's okay. what about progressive elaboration as and when we move ahead we will be elaborating more on the requirement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. do do you uh, okay first of all are you working any time in agile environment yeah okay in agile environment are you seeing that concept of planning as per the need as you get the requirement that's how we do yeah okay so now let me put this way um are you seeing the screen what i'm sharing yes sir okay uh what is rolling wave planning first wave okay a form of progressive elaboration applied to each work packages planning packages and release planning this is applicable in a predictive nature of project also in adaptive nature of project it can be any model of project wherever you have a work information some work information has a full clarity you refine it clearly and start the work some work information you don't have such clarity so what we do that is we do progressive elaboration as the days moves on progressively get detail and this progressive elaboration is applied or implemented through a way called rolling wave planning so rolling wave planning is a, is a form of progressive elab progressive elaboration is a concept progressive elaboration is a concept rolling oh. wave plan is a way of doing things oh right uh, in agile you have something like this right you always plan for a couple of sprints yes the rest of the sprints will be blank and what you're doing here is you're doing a rolling wave planning what is rolling wave planning rolling wave planning is a form of progressive elaboration you can see that uh, uh, superset and subset think like that superset is a progressive elaboration inner core subset is called rolling wave planning so i would have given an example like this when you enter a room it's pretty dark you open your mobile torch your mobile torch will show a distance of maybe 2 meters but you don't stand in the same place what do you do you take two steps and your light travel with you another 2 meters so it's a progressive elaboration as you move on you get more details and that concept is called progressive elaboration got yeah. it yeah yeah thanks to perfect good all right uh, i know time running faster already 45 minutes gone so what we do is we'll see some questions and then i'll go with uh, people who have questions here i'm going to bring a question i'm going to ask you to answer this question in the chat box um uh, you are seeing a screen right now in this screen there is a question i would expect you to give you an answer in the chat box
Mm -hmm. um, did everyone answer the question? Okay, I'm seeing answers. Uh, majority of them are C, some B is also there. Okay, great. I may have people with agile knowledge. Some may not have agile knowledge. Let's see this. Any one of you want to justify why you think B is an answer? Why B is an answer? People went with the B. Uh, I see Poonam here. Mm -hmm. So I went with B because uh, this is what you do in a backlog refinement. You uh, you, you look at um, the, the deliverable that you have to deliver the user uh -huh. story is completed and then you refine it. So that uh -huh. is what it is. Uh, backlog refinement explains uh, this agile manifesto that at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to okay. become more. Difficult. Got you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the input. I appreciate it. So you feel that there is a backlog refinement happening. Nice. Uh, anyone else also want to join for this for B? Okay. If not, let's go with the C. C, somebody want to explain why you thought this answer? Yeah, sure. So if you see in the question itself, regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective. Mm. So mm. that means uh, every sprint, uh, we need to understand that what went good mm. and what went wrong. We need to understand uh, where it went wrong. So that mm. retrospective has to be performed to go into the more effective manner in the future. Mm. So okay. that's why you know, it will achieve. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Now I have two different ways of looking things. Yeah, please go ahead, Emma. Here it says that adjust adjust its behavior accordingly. So it is like an improvement plan. And retrospective is the C is answer. Okay, behavior. It is not a requirement. It is a behavior of a human being. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay I see that. Okay, nice. Can someone help me with the 12th principle of Agile? You had this as a writing habits. What is the 12th principle of Agile? You should have a sheet in front of you or go to Google. You will get the principle immediately. Self-organizing. Right. This is a principle you see there, right? In 12 principles. Very good. Yeah. Now, uh, if you read this principle or have done this principle, one thing you should have done the question uh, it talks about behavior. If I heard one of the person here said that they're refining the requirement, okay? But uh, if you look at the principle, they want to talk about which of the following agile technique helps achieve this. You could do this behavior. It is not a requirement. It is a human behavior. But the behavior can be discussed in which area? Chartering the project and the team. Uh, when they say regular, I don't think you will do chartering the project and team on a regular basis. It's ruled out. Can you help me one more elimination here? Daily stand-ups. Daily stand-ups. But in daily stand-up also, we talk about project, what is happening in help needed. Don't you think it is also a place for regular interval to see something on the behavior? But in that, it's, it's more specific. You're not clear. Right. Anyone else want to say that why daily stand up cannot be a place to talk about behavior? In daily, daily stand up, stand -up has. On the 24 hours stand -up, like from today to next day, that what we have done, what we are doing, and what we'll be doing. And if there Shweta are close to now, Mike. Shweta close to Mike. Yeah. In daily stand up, we only talk about the work in progress. It's not about the complete project or how we have progressed so far. It's not about. Uh, the entire set. Okay. So, so goal focused. We have a goal for next 10 days or 15 days for the sprint. We talk only about the goal. Okay. I heard one more voice. Anyone else? Okay. Nice. So you have a goal and this daily stand-up is focused on the goal and you are talking about the work more than what the behavior should be. Okay. What we do in backlog refinement what we do here? We prioritize. Okay. We talk about the feature or we talk about user story. Is it what you're doing here? Nice. Yes, sure. Yeah, this is what we do. 
now let's read the principle the principle says at regular intervals the team reflects reflects when you want to reflect something should have happened only when a sprint completes 10 days or 15 days or 20 days you have something to reflect how to become more effective you are not inefficient you are good you are trying to see how can i be a little more better than this i'm sure i'm good than yesterday but i'm seeing what i can do a little more better today then you tune and adjust its behavior when i say its behavior team's behavior not individual when, I, when i'm talking about the team definitely i'm not talking about the requirement i'm talking about the way of working they call it as a process in your project we have a process to follow we tune the process now what happens is imagine there is a sprint happening a sprint goes between day 1 to day 10 i'm just giving an example of two weeks sprint in this two weeks sprint every day we have a daily stand up daily stand up as people mentioned here it's goal oriented we keep talking of course we can correct something here to fix a problem if somebody is not joining every day for the daily stand-up, we let them know, guys, be there. We need some details. But what happens is we will see end of the 10th day, have we achieved the goal? If we achieve the goal, in the retrospective, we'll give a round of applause and appreciation to everyone. Amazing, guys. You did a good job. Let's, uh, let's continue what we did last sprint for the next sprint also. I don't have anything to improve, but I can continue the same. Sometimes, even though I achieved successfully, still we feel we are successful, but little bit could have done better. You feel that, that will be discussed here. What if we didn't achieve the goal? We definitely talk about what happened. We guys are knowledgeable. Everyone was in office on time and all the dependency was resolved. Technical parameters are resolved. Still, we can't achieve it. What happened? Where we went wrong? So somebody will tell that, you know what, Ramesh, could not solve this because he doesn't have the knowledge in this area. I wish you could have said this before. Why you waited till the sprint? So something like this, they do the conversation very transparently, very honestly, without finger pointing anyone. And that happens in a place called retrospective. In the retrospective, you're not, you not too much on requirements. You are not too much on the deliverable. Rather, how has a team we performed? Like in cricket or football, they say that the... The team talks in the dressing room what, what to do, right? Th that's important. Uh, that, uh, that short discussion gives some energy for people. It's not to pinpoint and make people feel bad rather than make them feel good. And that's what the principle number 12 says. How many of you here know that in Agile we have 12 principles? Are you aware? There are 12 principles in Agile. Aware? Yes, she. Yes, she. Fantastic. And uh, I have given this as one of your writing habit in PMP. If you've done it at least a few times, by now you should have seen this 12th principle. And your curiosity brain of your sixth sense would have made you to read what this means actually. If you can done that, it will be useful. Even if you're not done today, do it later. In exam, definitely you will have something related to principles of Agile, not direct question indirect question will make you think are you aware of this so please read all principles of agile i know some of you new here i'm just trying to pass a message to you uh how does the answer look like answer looks like retrospectives are used used by agile team to reflect upon their way of working look at here the way of working now let me know have you seen this way of working as talent triangle do you remember that in PAP, there is something called a talent triangle. Anyone remember that? Anyone remember yes. that? Okay. Okay. I like this people very silent more today. Look like some people don't talk on Sundays. They keep the energy saved. So a ways of working is something. One is, what is the other parameter? Three things are in talent triangle. One is ways of working. What is the other one? People. Leadership. Our skills. Leadership. Business. Strategic and business. Business acumen. Business acumen. Now, what we're talking here is ways of working. Agile comes under ways of working to see how we perform as a team. All right, guys. That's good. Um, I have another question to share. Before that, let me see if anyone else have a question to discuss. Any one of you have a question to bring up here? 
if you have a question, please let know. We can share and discuss those questions. If not, I will bring another question I have with me. Okay, uh, let me assume that no one has put the hands up, so you don't have a question to discuss. So what I do is I'll bring a question now to you. Here's a question. I read this question. Mm -hmm. All right, I could see answers uh, mostly on D. Uh, I don't see any other answers all on D. <laughs> Looked like everyone is more knowledgeable in this area. Okay, so what is the key in this question? What's the key in this question? Bill is managing a website development project. He has recently received feedback from one of the key stakeholders, key, important person. The feedback is positive. By the way, this key comes out of what? Today we learned something. From where you get this word key? Stakeholder. Stakeholder analysis. In stakeholder analysis, we did a power interest power influence or salience model. Only through that, you come to know this person as a key. Is it right? If yes. you have not done that, you cannot know key. Because somebody volume is high, because somebody rich in something, doesn't mean they become key. Key should be somebody who influence on the project, who have a power in the project, who can contribute, who is genuine. If you get this thought clarified clearly, Monday, when you go back to office, you will not reply to every email because somebody has a big volume, because somebody goes with a director every day for coffee. You will not reply to them. You will reply to a person who is really key on this. Okay, that's a wrong understanding happens in many industry. They reply to talk to people because they are tall, because they have big voice, because they are associated with senior manager. No, you should know, are they having really power on the project? That's what key. The feedback is a positive overall, nice to know, but it contains some recommendations, important point. After analyzing the recommendations, the bill, who is bill? Bill is a manager here. Bill accepts them, gets them approved and incorporates them into the project, which means already whatever to be done is done. Now, the recommendations were then implemented and the new ideas are found successful. Nothing to worry. The question is explaining a scenario, very happy scenario. All are good. What needs to be done with the feedback? What do you have to do with this information you received? It is going to be called as a lessons learned or it should be recorded somewhere. So as I see the answers, everyone answered the D directly. Now let me ask the question. Do anyone want to explain why you thought D as an answer? Rather, publish it on the corporate intranet. Why not this? Why D become an answer? Any one of you who went to answer D? Lessons learned. Which is to write is part of OPA. Uh -huh. Even corporate intranet can be good, right? Well, it's not all. On, on demand. It could be on yes, demand. Time it is something to pull and push off information. Okay. Well, not all organizations may have an intranet to begin with. Possible, yeah, that could be one. Uh, okay. I mean, and if if D would not have been there, probably A would have been the answer. Was and... closest answer among those two, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
i heard one more voice ops are normally you know centrally handled by the pmo is it there in the organization so normally we can easily reach out to pmos for the uh, lessons learned registered and easily get that when we are moving to the next project or any other project managers needs it they can mm-hmm. refer to it hmm okay okay i'm i'm getting good answers here i appreciate it go ahead uh, i heard one more voice uh, shri uh, is it uh, it's because of the lesson learned register uh, we maintain as part of the yes organization yes. processes yes yes you are right on this point uh, but this also can be lessons learned right you recorded somewhere publish it on the corporate intranet okay possibly if they have a practice of uh, maintaining the ops in corporate but intranet. it is wouldn't it be for some time on corporate intranet only for a specific Possibly. duration specific duration so i yeah. what if i understood if i understand the background of it when i record an organizational process assert i am looking for a long duration long some, duration yes something will be recorded properly historically i can pull out any time publishing on intranet corporate um, corporate intranet is also fine but uh, how much it's going to benefit for a long run is a question mark because it's not a news to publish it is something an information handled by the project and that's going to be used by a similar project like this or somebody relevant to the project this corporate internet yes you can publish publish but what's the benefit how it's going to be in long run so when you look at this feedback or changes recommended applied yes it's a lessons learned and that should be for a long activity stay in your system so you have something called lessons learned registry lessons learned repository registry is then and there you record it repository is a collection of information so in your corporate there will be something called lessons learned repository which is maintained by pmo what is pmo project management office management office this department will maintain this information organizational process assets include lot of information one of the information is going to be lessons learned registry and that will help us to track back to say that this things happen sometime back this is how we did it maybe you can refer to corporate intranet if in case that will help you but corporate intranet rightly said here it's going to be short living one whereas a long living could be on the lessons learned recording is this the way you thought when you chose the answer as many of you chose the answer this way i believe so yes okay okay uh, there you go the feedback must be must not be discarded successful ideas and implemented recommendation need to be stored need to be stored in the organizational process library during the manage project knowledge process that's very important store it in the library for a long activity that's a point all right so that's a couple of questions i had for today so uh, any other questions i can help people around here all right hope it was a good sunday you had uh, some sri uh, sri i have one question sri sorry uh, mm-hmm. can i share my screen yeah please okay i think uh... i'm getting a message host disabled participant screen sharing yeah try it now again hmm. there is a question here 135 mm mm-hmm. Mm, read the question. Uh, one minute. One minute. This is not the question. Uh, be, uh...
Yeah, this is the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, you are conducting an iteration demonstration to a group of stakeholders. When the CFO expresses their displeasure over the missing reporting module, you explain to the CFO why the module was rescheduled to be developed in later iteration. How could you have better managed this? Mm. So my option was like you know, by including a prototype of the module in the demonstration. Mm. Uh, but the uh, right answer is by taking the CFO in confidence when the team looked the rescheduling decision. I don't know what is this uh, uh, about. I couldn't okay. uh, in interpret the exact explanation. Mm -hmm. Let's see this. You are conducting an iteration demonstration to a group of stakeholders. Okay. When the CFO expresses their displeasure over the missing reporting module, missing. So something we committed, but we didn't deliver it. Yeah. Mm. You explain to the CFO why the module was rescheduled uh -huh. to be developed in a later time. You want to do it by this Friday, but you didn't do it. And now you're explaining that on the demonstration time. How could you have done better it? Answer is by including a prototype of the module in the demonstration. Uh, I doubt why prototype should come here. You have to do five items. In this four you did, fifth item you didn't do. Your team and you yourself decided to reschedule it to some other day. Somebody is asking you, you said five, but you did only four. What happened to the fifth item? How prototype will help there? Mm, no, initially, the uh, the interpretation of the question, I what I uh, no, assumed that uh, it since the module was missing, it could have been better explained using the prototype. Uh, no, you missed the context of the question. Are you aware of iteration? The iteration goes for short duration. Yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. So iteration goes for a short duration. I believe you worked in iteration also. Am I right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very good. And let's imagine, uh, let's tell me how long your iteration goes in your company. Two weeks, uh, three weeks. Three weeks, three weeks per sprint. Three weeks iteration. In three weeks, your team committed five items to deliver. Yes. Now what happened is when the CFO expresses their displeasure over the missing reporting module, one of the item is not delivered. Okay. Uh, you explain to the CFO why the module was rescheduled. Now, you being a manager or someone on the team, key person, you are telling to them, we did not do this because it is scheduled to this time. This is what you're explaining to this person. Hmm. In this point, I doubt a prototype will help. The question itself is something on why you didn't do, why you didn't inform me, why you didn't, why I'm not aware of it. That's a question. Yeah. A prototype means proto is something when you do, when you want to do something as a proof of concept and you show something, how does something will work like? That's called prototyping. Mm -hmm. okay, so proto doesn't make sense here. Mm -hmm. Then what? Let's see what is given as a right answer. By taking the CFO in a confidence, when the team took the rescheduling decision, there is a space missed out there. Point is, as a team, we made a rescheduling, but have you informed the stakeholder that it is being rescheduled? That's a that's a overall ask here. So far, we learned a power interest grid. We learned about influential grids. In this, what we did, we want to learn who is important and what to do with their communication. The whole purpose of stakeholder learning is communication. Here, somebody is questioning you why this is not delivered, which means this person is not informed. If this person is informed, or involved in the rescheduling parameter, do you think this question will arise on that day? No. That is where the question is pointing. The question is looking for the PMI perspective is, first of all, are you aware of stakeholder register importance? Are you aware of communication is important? Are you aware of informing the right people right time? That is the intention of this question. That's so why they're asking how could have done better. Better is you would have involved them. That's the only thing. CFO in confidence means uh, uh, taking their buy-in or what? Uh, you can tell me what do you do 
when you have a stakeholder and that person is asking a requirement delivery, what you will do? Delivery. We keep communicating. Uh, communicate. Yeah. Okay. Are you having a product owner in your team? Yes. Yes, sir. Is this product owner involves somebody else on a key deliverable timeline? Uh, no. Hmm. On such situation, they involve the key people also. So that's the intention of this question. You have to see and keep involved. When you say confidence, what is the confidence? You share the detail of why you are rescheduling and they should also agree for that or mm -hmm. disagree for that. That's what it is. Okay. So idea here is, question, let's go a little back, zoom out, zoom out. The main purpose of this question to see that, yes. are we really understanding communication is very important in deliverables? And if it is important, how do you do this? That's what the answer B talks. Hmm. Perfect. Yes. Okay. All right. Your weather report says don't pour tomorrow. Be very careful when you go to office. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Good. Which city you are, Abdul? Singapore. Singapore is going to rain heavily. Nice. All right, guys. Uh, thanks all for joining here. It was good communicating. Uh, we will continue this uh, subject knowledge discussion going forward in classes if it's helpful for you all. And we'll have this kind of question discussion. Bring some questions. So we'll converse those questions also. Thanks all for the participation. Have a good time. And we will join again by next uh, Sunday. Meantime, some of them who cleared the exams will come with uh, happy news. So wishes to all the people who are preparing for the examination. Catch you all on coming Sunday. Bye-bye. Thank you. 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 Thank